I have quit caffeine for 20 years. So when I was young, I tried my first cup of coffee. Well, I didn't even finish it. I had a sip of coffee from a Canadian chain called Tim Hortons. So anyone in Canada will know all about that. I think the U.S. has a few Tim Hortons chains. But anyway, this is like the first introduction to caffeine. And I couldn't stand the taste for whatever reason. I guess it tasted like mud. I know you can add like cream and sugar and whatnot to make it taste good, but that experience basically turned me off of caffeine for the next 20 years. Now, when I had first tried this coffee, you know, I had other things like Coke and um, other maybe soft drinks that had caffeine and whatnot, but there was never anything that really interested me. Like, I, I wasn't obsessed with drinking soft drinks. And then, you know, I might have root beer or whatnot, but it was, like, caffeine-free. So, um, and I've tried, like, decaf teas and whatnot. But anyway, this experience with the coffee, and, I mean, my experience with Coca-Cola basically turned me off of most soft drinks. So... Yeah, I'd say about 20 years of really not drinking caffeine now. More recently, I've had tried different like mochas and stuff, things that maybe didn't have that much caffeine, but I never really got addicted to any of this kind of stuff. And I notice a lot of people love caffeine. They have to have their Starbucks in the morning, and it's never something that really resonated with me, but it's kind of like a drug it's a stimulant and i can see the appeal to it but for whatever reason my brain did not like any of this kind of stuff so yeah 20 years and i mean there there have been different spurts where i've maybe had, well no actually there haven't really been any spurts i've just not been interested in it and now my go-to drink of choice is Water. This is actually just water, by the way. Mm. That's usually my drink of choice. So can I give any advice to anyone that maybe wants to get off of caffeine? Mm. I'm not really the best person to answer this because I'm not, I'm not like an ex-caffeine lover. I just never loved caffeine, so I'm not really the best person to answer this. Um, can you swap out caffeine for something else? Can you swap it out for, I don't know, an increase in water intake, an increase in fruits and vegetables? Maybe, I guess. Uh, there's, I guess, a detox. You're going to have to detox it from your body to think that you need to depend on it to stay awake. Oh, I guess the other thing is, are you getting enough sleep? Maybe you need more sleep. I think that has an an effect. Uh, When people wake up, they're groggy, they're tired, which is actually natural. It can be natural if you feel groggy or tired, or maybe you had a bunch of sugar last night and you just feel groggy. So what you're doing is, ah, I need the caffeine to like wake myself up. You're thinking in order to function for your work day or whatever day, you need to drink caffeine to get you going. And you'll gravitate to the caffeine. I know it does things to the mind, though. It's an addictive type of substance. Does it have its benefits? Sure, maybe, yeah, I guess. could have different antioxidants depending on what you have with your drink. Now, if you're ordering a double-double or something, you probably are having way too much caffeine. Uh, The amount of time you could save as well, and you think about it positively, you could save a lot of time through drive-throughs and all that by not having caffeine because you eliminate that and you don't have to sit in a drive through every every morning. Um, that'll take away a lot of time. So there's another benefit, not drinking caffeine. Um, 
this, I think this sleep is a big one though. If you get enough sleep, you're well rested, you probably don't have to worry too much about trying to wake yourself up in the morning. That's something to keep in mind. But yeah, how have I done it? Well, you know, there's a trick. This, this goes for alcohol too. Not really into alcohol, never been into alcohol, but you, you try, you try like the worst possible version of something and that might scare you away from it. I remember like my first taste of alcohol was like, I think it was Budweiser beer, it was some kind of beer. And that experience turned me off of all alcohol. I just could not stand it. It was like the most disgusting thing and I just didn't understand the value of it or the point of it. So that's that's what happened for me. It's like I tried the worst possible versions of these things. And ever since, I've just never been into it. So uh, the coffee's like everywhere around you. Caffeine is in so many different things. It can be tough to get away from it. Especially if you like tea, you, I mean, caffeine's in tea. Oh, so many different things that you have to avoid. Or you could kind of replace it with another addiction. I don't know, addiction to creative activities, addiction to exercise. A lot of people do that. There's a lot of other things that can be done other than drinking caffeine. As I'm talking through all of this, I'm just sharing my experience of like how I've just stopped the caffeine train all these years. And by going through this process, maybe it'll help you. And it'll be like, oh yeah, I could probably quit caffeine if I try the absolute worst version of it. Maybe, maybe it'll work. It worked for me. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I just thought I'd share that. Some people might find that interesting. As I, I see a, a significant dependency on it. And uh, the, the drive throughs and everything. And, and people maybe having their home coffee machines. And it's, it's very easily accessible. You've got the coffee aisle in the grocery store and you're thinking oh, I gotta have that coffee and you go for it I can understand it it's there your brain wants it you want that pick me up or for some people it might help you fall asleep could do that I've seen effects in that aspect but it's it's an interesting thing that people gravitate towards and it's socially acceptable as well it's even more acceptable than drinking alcohol at parties. It's like having coffee in the morning at work or having coffee before you go to work or having coffee after work or having coffee at lunch or standing around the coffee machine waiting for it to brew. It's, it's such a standardized thing. It's, it's very common in this world. It's kind of odd. And, and, and I, I remember like seeing donuts in the workplace. It's like having sugar in the morning is also very common. It's all interesting social constructs that have been created. And I don't know if they're exactly the best approach to, <laughs> to ensuring productivity. Uh, do people have coffee crashes? I guess people have like crashes. I, I, you have the coffee, it gives you that high, and then once it like the effects wear off, some people have three, four cups of coffee a day, so they'll need that next cup of coffee by lunchtime, and they'll need it by three o'clock in the afternoon, the three o'clock snooze or whatever they call it. So you have these like down spikes. It's like your body is constantly fluctuating, and you're using coffee as the stimulant to get yourself going. But the natural setting to like eliminate that and just let your body naturally control things. Oh, you're tired? Maybe you should go to sleep. Or 
maybe you need a nap and that's probably better instead of going towards that cup of caffeine you know yeah Uh, maybe it's more like listening to the body and saying whoa do i need this or can i like back off and maybe get something else this is why they need to have nap rooms in the office not coffee machines yeah nap rooms and to encourage people to have that nap because that's actually perhaps going to boost productivity Mm -hmm. okay i think that's that's good i kind of rambled on that i just thought it was interesting as i was thinking about caffeine i'm thinking you know i i have these coffee cups in my apartment but i i've only ever used it for water so yeah i've only ever only ever had water in these cups but any anyway okay until next time bye